Hey there, Lisa here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you'll join me in my love of crafting and DIYs and hit that subscribe button. For today's projects, we are doing a farmhouse-ish coffee corner. Um, I did five little projects, uh, coffee bean heart art, saying shelf sitter, mini boxwood topiary, coffee house pod holder, and a set of counter shelves. Before we jump into the projects, I just want to say how honored and excited I am to do this collaboration with Teresa. You have to check out Teresa B. DIY if you have not yet. She is super talented, and not only is she super talented and has great content, but she's also really super sweet and has done so much to help me in growing my channel. Now for the fun, let's create. So I did a set of counter shelves. Uh, supplies you'll need for this is wood. I used pine uh, two cut at 18 by five and a half inches and then four cut at four by four inches. Um, you could cut at any size though to fit your space. A saw, antique wax, a rag, eight nails. I used one and a half inch nails, wood glue, and a hammer. First, I went out and my husband um, showed me how to use the miter saw on the slide function um, and we cut the shelf tops, the two 18 inch long pieces. And then when I was comfortable enough with it, I went ahead and cut the four legs. I'm really loving the saw. And then I used Waverly Antique Wax to give it a, a stained dark antique look. Um, I've always used stain and have never used wax, but I really like this. Um, it's super cold outside. Normally I stain out in the garage and it's too cold. And so I found this wax to work really, really good. And I thought it just gave it a really pretty rustic look to it. Um, I just did one coat on everything and I did do front back all sides because depending on where you're standing you will see most everything um, also I kind of had fun I like to get messy and then here I am doing the same thing with the four four legs two for each shelf and then it was time to assemble them so I got my nails my wood glue a ruler first up I put a little bit of wood glue and then I measured, I wanted them about one and a half inches from the edge, just so that I could make use, the best use of the space underneath, but I didn't want them right at the edge. Um, so it did take me a little bit to get them situated under there. Uh, there's probably an easier way to do this, but I'm not a carpenter, so <laughs> I'm just learning as I go. And so once I had them both set at an inch and a half, I went through and nailed and I just did a nail in the front and a nail in the back I didn't tell you yet but the the legs don't go all the way back because I wanted to be able to push them um, up against the back of the counter and the back ledge would go over the lip of the counter so that it gave me more counter space in the front um, so that's why the nail isn't being nailed clear at the back so there they are in there and then here you go see I show you that they're they're shorter in the back and so here we go we're gonna put them up against the counter and see it slides back right over the lip of the counter so it gives you you know more usable space in the front but you could stack them put them in a corner whatever suits your fancy this project the coffee house pod holder was by far the most in-depth project I did and time consuming. For this, you will need 20 paint sticks, cut each to six and a half inches long, a saw, a quarter inch square dowel, cut four pieces at six inch sections, white paint, paintbrush, ruler, wood glue, two Dollar Tree palettes, antique wax or stain, a mug wooden cutout ornaments from the Dollar Tree, off-white paint, sandpaper, letter stickers or you can do vinyl or stencils hot glue gun two small nails like the little picture frame nails a rag and a hammer first up was sawing everything so i did 20 paint sticks at six and a half inches long um, and i do get smart here and realize that i can do two at a time eventually um, but it was kind of time consuming to get all these cut 
And then it was time to cut the square dowel. I, I need to get a little handsaw. I tried several different ways um, and the ends were jagged and they weren't the right sizes. Um, I tried a metal saw, but that wasn't working. So note to self, get a bigger saw. Um, our miter saw, the, the teeth are too big to cut stuff like this. Um, so anyways, I had to go back and sand down so that they weren't super jagged. And then I took wood glue. I did try the Dollar Tree wood glue. Um, I didn't make it real far with it. it. It wasn't holding together as quickly as I'm used to the Gorilla glue, Gorilla wood glue doing. Um, but I just started assembling from the bottom. So I made a square with my paint sticks. <laughs> it's kind of wobbly there. So I made the square and then I sort of pushed it over to the wall and put something heavy on it until it dried. And like I said, with this Dollar Tree glue, it did take quite a while to dry. Um, then I went with my square dowels and glued them in. So clear down to the bottom there. And then I glued them in and clamped those. I did have a way to clamp those. I need to get some corner clamps. And as you see there, I was using the, the Gorilla Glue. I, I moved on pretty quickly. For small little things, um, I'm sure that Dollar Tree wood glue is fine, but this needed to have a pretty good hold. Um, so then I went and did the top, or the bottom, I can't remember which was which, but um, same way I did the other end, but since I had the wooden dowels, I was able to clamp to get them and then I am doing the bottom. So you go through and put your four slats across the bottom. Like I said, this is a really a very time consuming project, but it turned out pretty cute and I needed it a certain size. I had tried using some of the little crates that you can buy from Dollar Tree. I tried using some crates we had, um, but it just wasn't working. So I decided just to make my own. And so then, oh, here I am finishing the top. That's right. While those two were clamped and um, drying, I went ahead and did the slats on the bottom. I see, I forget how I did it already. And then you just go through um, and do the slats on all the sides. I eyeballed it. Um, they're probably not even similar to the same size on each side, but I knew you were really only gonna see one side. Um, and then two sides you'd see sort of at an angle, but it doesn't need to look perfect. I didn't need it to look perfect anyway. Here's the other thing. I moved along too quick. I should have let them dry a little bit before I moved along. Um, some of them slid just a little, but I got in a rush. Next, I glued two of the pallets together, and then I glued the other two together, and once that had dried, I glued them together to make a roof peak here. Um, and I don't show it, but I did have to go back and put a little picture frame nail on each end of the roof um, because my husband didn't want it attached. He wanted to be able to remove the roof to get the pods in and out. Um, then I gave it a, a coat of white paint and then I gave it another coat of white paint. Um, I couldn't decide on brushes. It ended up that the sponge brush worked well to do um, the, you know, the little intricate pieces. And then I like just the regular paintbrush to do the slats. I think I gave this, I gave it one overall coat inside out every everything. And then, well, except the bottom. And then I gave it one additional coat just on the, um, sides that you would see. And then with antique wax, I went through and I did the roof. Um, this is my first time ever working with this stuff and I kind of like it. You know, I, I love that it gives it that stained look, but without the smell. Um, and I started out trying to do the bare minimum and I ended up doing it all. Um, here I'm trying to do in between the slats at least the way you look at it so that you're not seeing the bare wood and then for the inside because it was harder to work with I used a little bit of brown paint and a baby wipe I cheated a little bit but 
it matched close enough in color that you could see it. And it's a little bit quicker and easier to apply than the antique wax. You don't have to push as hard. And then next up, I took my little coffee tree ornament and I filled the hole and then I sanded it down. I'm sorry, I forgot to get um, video of that. And then I painted it this sort of light yellow off-white color. And once that had dried, I took um, little letter stickers and I put those on. I don't, I'm really bad with stencils and I don't have um, a Cricut or anything. So I wanted to give this a shot. And so I went ahead and put those on. And then what I'm gonna do is give it a coat of brown over the top. And I think I peeled them off too soon because they did bleed quite a bit. But since I was going for a rustic look, I just went with it and once it dried I just gave it a really really rough sanding so that you couldn't tell how poorly I did the letters and finally I took my hot glue gun and glued on my coffee house sign and then the roof just sits on top so you just set it up there and there it is all done filled with pods this project is a mini boxwood topiary. The supplies I picked up was fake boxwood. I got that at the Dollar Tree. Hot glue gun, antique wax, rag, floral tape, small rubber bands, and six inch wooden dowel, floral foam, a two and a half inch terracotta pot, and Spanish moss. The small rubber bands and the, and the floral tape I used because I could not find a two and a half inch styrofoam ball. Um, having a styrofoam ball would make this a little bit quicker. So the first thing I did was take all the, the pieces off the end of the longer stems. And then I took four at a time and tied a rubber band around them. And I did six total bunches, you know, and this is because I couldn't find the right size styrofoam ball um, at my Dollar Tree or at Walmart. I live in a small area, so... And then because, you know, they were bright colors, I took the floral tape and just went over the rubber bands just to sort of hide them. I didn't think that I would be able to get them connected right with just the floral tape, which is why I did do the rubber bands. And then I started gluing them together by the ends. Um, and I just sort of glued and bunched and squeezed and just glued until I could get it to resemble somewhat of a circle. And I kind of like the way it turned out. It's, it's a little messy and chaotic, but I think it turned out all right. Um, and then I went and filled in any areas. There's a couple areas that looked really bare somehow. And so I did take a few just plain and did that. And then I cut a piece of floral foam to put in the base to hold the stick. I did put a little bit of the Waverly antique wax on the stick. See, I use this a lot. I just had got this bottle before these projects and I really enjoyed using it. So just to darken up my dowel a little bit, I put that on there and then I let it dry just a little bit and then I glued my boxwood ball to the uh, to the dowel, and then you just I just stuck it in the pot, and finally I added a little bit of Spanish moss just to hide everything that was inside there. There we have it. It adds a little bit of green, and I think really gives off that farmhouse vibe. This project I'm calling Coffee Bean Heart Art. Say that ten times fast. For supplies, you will need a canvas form, this was a 5x7, a piece of burlap, white paint, heart-shaped template, or you can freehand it, coffee beans, a light-colored permanent marker, chalk, just something to draw on the burlap, hot glue gun, scissors, a paintbrush, and then some cardstock or um, cardboard or something to put on the back. The first thing I did was trace my heart on the burlap using a silver Sharpie um, because it showed up. And then I took a paintbrush with some white paint and just did an outline of the heart. Uh, I just wanted 
something bright on there. I'm um, using a lot of dark in this corner and so I wanted some white. So I did that and then I went over it just a little bit thicker, um, <laughs> making sure it's going to fit in my frame. And then it was time to apply the coffee beans. I just used the hot glue gun and started applying them. It was kind of like a puzzle because they're all different shapes and sizes and trying to make them fit in there. But it was kind of fun. I, I think I might do something like this again sometime, maybe a different design or something. Um, but it did take a while. <laughs> and as you can see here, I glued it to the counter several times you know but yeah you just keep going around do the outer edge and then I just worked my way um, out in glued it to the counter again <laughs> oh, there I get smart and put it over the canvas frame to finish it up you just keep working till it's all filled in then I took and glued it to the frame I sort of just glued it back on like you would the canvas on the frame um, going around and gluing it and be careful because you know I'm horrible with burning myself with the hot glue gun but this was a really tough project because um, it just seeps right through the holes then I took a safety pin and got out some of the strings I had hot glue strings everywhere and then I trimmed up the edges there that were sticking out and I traced it onto a piece of cardstock and cut the cardstock out and it doesn't fit so I have to cut it a little bit shorter and then I glued on the cardstock on the back and there you have it coffee bean heart art it's really hard to say give it a try this project is a little shelf sitter the supplies you will need is wood I used pine because it's what I had cut to four and a half by four and a half inches a ruler, a saw, black paint, a white paint marker, um, a printer so that you can print the graphic that I did up in Canva, a paintbrush, a pencil, a pen, and some tape. So I took my piece of wood and I painted it. Pretend that you are watching me paint this block of wood black. <laughs> I started out painting it white and tried a Mod Podge transfer technique and I just don't have it down good enough to make it look nice. Um, so I went with my old style technique. You print it and on the back you color it with pencil and then you write over it with pen, um, pressing fairly hard so that it goes through. And then once you get it all written, you take it off and it did take a little bit of paint off and you can see there um, now you kind of have it there so that you can trace over it. So I used a white paint marker and went over it. My hands are not really steady. So up close, it doesn't look great. Um, but from a distance, it's, it's fine. The saying is cute. I did end up needing to go over it with the white paint marker several times, um, at least three. And then I think I may have done even a fourth in some areas. Then I went back over any mistakes with the black paint marker. Um, and on the very bottom there, where I had pulled up the paint, I went ahead and used the brush for that. And so here it is. So before the final project, I had gotten these um, stick on tiles and the tiles were kind of hard to work with. I picked a really tough design and you'll see I didn't finish because um, I needed to buy a bunch more and I decided I'm going to go with subway tile because I want them to be white. And I also want nice straight edges of subway tile because I think they won't be as difficult to apply. So I apologize for the half tile, half red look here. It is a work in progress. But here it is. Here is my completed little coffee corner. It makes me happy. That's exactly what I wanted. Was just something cheerful to look at in the morning. I'm not a morning person. So something cheerful in the morning is a good thing. You'll have to let me know which is your favorite and what you think. Did I do okay? Is it farmhouse-ish enough? <laughs> and if you like this video, uh, be sure to subscribe to see more DIYs and projects. 
and be sure that you hop over and see Teresa's farmhouse. I know it won't disappoint and subscribe to her channel because she has some amazing stuff. I have a couple videos coming up next week and then I am thinking I will switch gears a little bit more into finishing our home renovation. Uh, so putting up those subway tiles, finish painting and that sort of thing. So watch for videos on that as well. Anyways, thanks so much for spending part of your day with me today and I hope you get a great cup of coffee. Thanks so much again. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.